Hi, I'm Mr. Richman. This is your Integrated Math 2, Unit 12.2 Lesson Summary. We're going to continue our exploration of quadratics um, in standard form and start to look at how we can identify linear functions and quadratic. We've done linear in Math 1, we focus on quadratic in Math 2, and now we're going to look at some different techniques on how we can tell the difference between them without just looking at the graph. So one thing we can look at um, or need to know about with these uh, functions is the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is the numerical coefficient. Okay, if you don't know what a coefficient is, it's the number in front of a variable of the term with the greatest power. So for example, I have the function y equals negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 2. Negative 3 is our leading coefficient because x squared is our highest power and negative 3 is in front of it. And that leading coefficient is going to be important because we're going to find out that it determines what way the graph opens up. Now, if this was a linear equation, um, it means it's sloping down because it's negative or sloping up because it's positive. Uh, with a quadratic, it's going to mean both parts of our uh, quadratic is opening up if it's positive, down if it's negative. Okay, and we'll put that in, in uh, a little more concrete terms in a, in a section or two. Okay, but for now, just know leading coefficient is important. Positive opens up, negative opens down. Difference between consecutive values of the first differences is what we call second differences. Um, and we're going to do some table uh, exploring in a table to see how second differences are important and how they can help us determine whether a function is linear or quadratic. Okay, so a fairly short lesson this time. Um, the only two skills we really need to get out of this is how to graph from a table, which all of us should know, but it's more identifying what it is after, and then how we can use a table to determine whether it's linear or quadratic. So for this first part, I just have to graph this function, plot these points. Uh, my first point is 1, 6. So I'm going to make a scale here first. For my graph, I need to be able to go up to 6 and negative 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I have a grid now. And remember, x just moves things left to right. y moves up and down. So 1, 6. Positive 1 would be right 1. 6 would be up 6, and I have my first point. And then I can plot my second point. Right 2, up 3 for 2, comma 3, and 3, comma 0. Right 3, no movement up and down. 4 is right 4, negative 3 is down 3. And lastly, 5 and negative 6. And now, by looking at your points, you can see the general trend of what these are doing. And so even though these table values are discrete, I'm going to try to turn this into a function um, and graph it and, and basically make some predictions on where it's going to go from here. So it does look like it's making a straight line. So that's what I'm going to turn it into, which means my graph is a linear function. So graphing it is probably the easiest way to tell what it is because you can look at what it looks like and tell what type of function, but it is also the most, can be the most time consuming depending on how many points you need to plot before you can see that. So that must be a linear function. Second one, same process, gonna graph it at negative two, negative eight. So you need to be able to go down to eight on the y-axis. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Don't have to be able to go too, too far here, just to six. Okay, and I'm gonna to to start plotting my points just like I did before. Negatives take me left and down now. And zero, zero, and two, four, and four. Four, four, and six, zero. Now, this could be a little tougher because of how the table's moving around, but I've got to try to imagine and finish the puzzle. It's going up, and then it has to end up back in the same point. And grass never just kind of abruptly changed direction there, so it's got to kind of curve. It looks to me like it is making a parabola, and I can follow that trend the rest of the way down. And 
so a little trickier for the since the tables hop around, but I can still tell that that is making a quadratic function because it's making our u kind of parabola shape. And that's really it here is can you graph the table and identify what you're looking at? Fairly straightforward section. Now for something a little different. Probably haven't done this before, but we're going to examine the first and second differences in a table to try to determine if it's linear or quadratic without having to graph it. So what is a first difference? A first difference is the difference between the y values from one part of the table to the next. So here it's 6 and 3, so the difference is 3. However, there's one big key thing. You need to be going by the same amount in the table. So if this is going up by 1 every time, then it's okay to find the differences. If this is going up by two every time, it's still okay to find the differences. If the table's hopping around up for the for the sorry for the x or the input, if that's not coming up going up by a consistent amount, you can't really do this. So if it went up by one, then three, then two, then one, it's not consistent. So you're going to have to try to use table values that have a consistent increase for the x value. This one does, so not a problem. Difference between six and three, three. Difference between three and zero. 3. Now, sign doesn't matter here. We're just talking about the, the distance almost between it. So think of a positive value. Differ, uh, distance between 0 and negative 3, 3. Distance between negative 3 and negative 6, 3. So here we have common first differences. The rule here with functions is that if you're linear, if you're linear, you have the same first differences. Always. In order for something to be linear, the first differences have to be the same. For a quadratic function, first differences will not be the same, but second will. And a real, real easy way to remember this is that well, what power, what exponent do linear equations have? Well, 3x, 4x, 5x, that has the power of 1, so the first differences, or the 1 differences, have to be the, uh, the same. For a quadratic, you have x squared, so your degree is 2, your power is 2, so the second differences have to be the same. Easy way to remember that. So what are my second differences here? Uh, between 3 and 3, 0. 3 and 3, 0. 3 and 3, 0. So you can see it's the first one that becomes recognizable. You have to find the first differences before you can find second. As soon as I get that consistent, I'm good. Even though the second difference are the same here, the first are what matters. It happened first, so this must be a linear function. And another bit of proof for it for this example is if you look at my table, it's the exact same one I already graphed. And I did that on purpose so you can see that and kind of have a trust in what I just showed you. Okay, so let's take a look at the second table. What's the first difference is here? Now again, they're not going by one this time, but they're going by two, 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 two. So at least it's consistent. So I can still do this with this table, even though it's not going by ones. So the first differences are eight, between 0 and 4 is 4, between 4 and 4 is 0, between 4 and 0 is 4. So notice here, not common first differences. So I keep going. Second differences, difference between 8 and 4, 4. Difference between 4 and 0, 4. Difference between 0 and 4, 4. Now I have common second differences. That now makes it a quadratic function. And again, just to verify its quadratic function, it is the exact same table I used here. So really our only focus here in section 12.2 is on identifying whether our function is linear or quadratic and being able to do that two ways. One, with the table and graphing it and then knowing what linear means, straight line, quadratic makes a parabola, or by examining the first and second differences and looking for common first differences, which makes it linear, or common second differences, which makes it quadratic, whichever happens first. So. Thank you.